It came out of the blue. First, the Chinese special envoy to COP26 announced his country was going to work with the United States on climate action. Here, I'd like to announce an important message. China and the United States have jointly released a China-U.S. joint Glasgow declaration on enhancing climate action in the 2020s online. Shortly after that came John Kerry, confirming what amounts to some sort of partnership. The United States and China have no shortage of differences, but on climate, on climate, cooperation is the only way to get this job done. This is not a discretionary thing, frankly. This is science. It's math and physics that dictate the road that we have to travel. China and the U.S. aren't only the two biggest economies on Earth, they're also responsible for the biggest emissions of carbon dioxide and methane gases. And that's why such a joint effort may have added value. Details about exactly what effect it will all have are limited at this stage. But regardless of that, it's given a lift to proceedings here at a difficult time. Earlier, Boris Johnson had headed back to Glasgow on an electric train, not the private jet he used to fly to London last week. His mission, to try bridging the gaps on a final agreement. The world has heard leaders from every country, continent, stand here and acknowledge the need for action. And the world will find it absolutely incomprehensible if we fail to deliver that. And the backlash from people will be immense and it will be long lasting. And frankly, we will deserve their criticism and their opprobrium. Fossil fuel states may not like it, but the draft working text has devised a ratcheting up effect on cutting emissions. Countries would review progress with foreign ministers meeting next year and with heads of state gathering in 2023. No one needs reminding of what's at stake, although this new time-lapse study over six weeks shows how quickly a glacier in Iceland can melt. COP26 negotiations are getting more intense, not helped by latest research showing temperatures could rise by 2.4 degrees Celsius, not near enough to the 1.5 Celsius cap to be anything other than dangerous. And that's even if all the promises for emission cuts and other measures come to fruition. Countries like the Gambia in West Africa, which is one of few states managing to comply with demands from the Paris Agreement in 2015. We are leading, the Gambia is leading the negotiation on adaptation. But so far, we're talking about long-term financing, we're talking about loss and damage, we're talking about other sticking issues that are not forthcoming from the negotiations. So this is a concern for uh, developing countries, and least developed countries for that matter. This is highly unlikely to be the last version of a draft agreement. With rules of consensus in which every one of nearly 200 COP members have to agree, it's feared a final action plan is more likely to be watered down rather than toughened up. Andrew Simmons, Al Jazeera, Glasgow.